What's going on today, Internet? Selfish here with Retrospect. I'd all but given up on making this video because of some things I had going on with this R40S. But we got it going. It's an interesting little handheld, to say the least. Let's take a look. This bad boy right here is the R40S. It is a somewhat thinner version of the RGB30. They feel to be about the same weight. I have some very similar features, both uh, rocking the same internals. As far as the RK3566 CPU, they do look very similar in some areas. So let's like we always do, we're gonna go through the IO real quick. Right here on the top, we do have our triggers. We do have L1, L2, R1, R2. We do have right over here, our power and reset switches. We do have an HDMI hole. We're getting to your TV. We do have a volume down and volume up. And yes, they are backward like they almost always are on these devices which is why ArcOS has added a button so you can switch which one's up and down. Oddly enough though, these are different sizes, so it kind of screws that whole thing up, but we can get into that as we go. On the back here, we have a whole bunch of screw holes. Screw holes. <laughs> All right. On the bottom here, we do have our USB-C in. This does say it can do fast charging. I have yet to experience that, but maybe my fast chargers are just too fast. We do have two micro SD holes, and these are for your operating system and your games. And then we do have a 3.5 hole, along with speaker holes here underneath the grills. On the right-hand side here, left-hand side. On the left-hand side here, we have nothing but some bumps. And the same here on the right hand side. On the front here, we do have our face buttons which suck. I did kind of fix mine a little bit so it made it usable. These are interconnected so you hit one and it hits other ones. They kind of all move together normally. I've now separated mine so they're not moving in sync anymore, which I will tell you how to do that here in a minute. We do have our start and select buttons down here. We do have our D-pad if you want to call it that. And then we also do have our joysticks. These are going to be switch style joysticks and they do have R3 and L3. One thing that's unique about these joysticks is they are diagonal. So if you are an Xbox or or Nintendo player, you're going to be very happy. Most of the joysticks on these emulators are parallel, which would be similar to the Sony style. So they have changed that up, and on these ones they are running diagonal, more similar to a Nintendo Switch or a Xbox. Pretty neat. Before we get any further into this, we're just going to go over the specs real quick. I'm just hoping that everything's going to work here still. This is running a Linux OS. It is actually running a modified version of Arc OS specifically for the R40S. It is an RK3566 CPU. It does have one gigabyte of LPDDR4 RAM. It has Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth. It has HDMI, OTG, and a 3.5 out. Now, those are all exact specs to the RGB30. There's one small change. This does have a 4,000 milliamp battery versus a 4,100 milliamp battery. This one says it does fast charging. I, I don't have one that works on it. I don't I don't have an answer for that, but maybe it does. I have tested the HDMI. It does work. All the peripherals seem to work, but they didn't necessarily when I got it. So we'll kind of go through a little bit how this came and how it is now and what experience you may have when you get this. Now, I have been told that some of these original units were engineering units, so these problems have been fixed. There's a lot of us that just order these on our own. This wasn't sent to me on accident, so I don't see how this could be an engineering unit, but I could be wrong. When you get this handheld, your L1 and R1 button probably won't move. Mine didn't move. I've seen lots of complaints online from people who have received these that don't move. I've talked to other reviewers, theirs don't move. Talked to people on my Discord that have this, theirs don't move either. The fix that we came up with, and I can throw up a little bit of video here because I actually just took some of the video when I was pulling this apart just so you can see how to open it at least. I don't think that I recorded the actual fix, but all you have to do is take out these screws. There's six of them on the back here. There is these little tape nubs that are behind all the switches and they are not long enough, kind of. They're too squishy, so they get stuck and they don't expand back out. So eventually they get stuck in the downward position and then the button's too far away, so it can't actually hit the button and it doesn't have any spring left. So the reason why they're squishy is to give them a little bit of spring and keep them off of the switch. It makes sense. A lot of handhelds have that. That makes sense. These unfortunately are soft enough where they don't spring back out. So when I got this handheld, you couldn't use these buttons. You could about one every 10 times it would register an input, but the buttons themselves didn't move at all. Now one advantage of this is it doesn't sound like a POW Kitty device, right? I've tightened these ones up and they're still loud. You listen to this one. Oh, it's upside down. Hold on. It's much, much quieter. There is an advantage to that. I think they might have just overdid it or didn't use a premium enough little bumper back there where it, it didn't get air gapped. So it does have an issue. There's issues with these other buttons too. Not as important. These ones are sitting right on it. Your L2 and R2 are sitting right on the switch. So those ones don't have any issues. You may see the same problem persist with your power and your volume buttons. Now, also, word to the wise after I've done this once, make sure if you do do this that you put your volume and your power buttons incorrectly they actually do sit in each other's spaces. They flip around and they sit in each other's spaces. I know they look the same, but behind there, there actually is a connector between them. And so you can actually put them in backward because that's what I did the first time I did this. So I did get that fixed. I started looking at some other things. The D-pad in this handheld is barely usable. I'd say one out of every two to three inputs registers. And the reason being, and it's hard to see on here, but this D-pad completely bottoms out. So if you push in the center, it goes below the shell. I don't know if this is picking that up very well, but the actual D-pad goes below the shell. And so I'll show you here in a menu. Okay, it did wake up. A lot of times it won't wake up. Also, 
None of these favorites or the history are mine. And I actually went through and added favorites and should have a history on here because I've been playing with it for a little over a day now. I got nothing. See now I'm not getting any input here. It's very inconsistent. Same with up. Up is actually worse than down usually. I would like to say that that's why they put the joystick up on top instead of the D-pad. I know that's not the reason. They wanted to make it a little different than the RGB 30. It's going to play the same game, so it should still be a D-pad centric handheld. And if they were going to make it more joystick centric, you would have thought they would have put more games that require a joystick on here. That's not here nor there, but you are kind of stuck using the joystick unless you really want to suffer through this. I'll come up with a fix for this. I was working on it a little bit, but my biggest issue I had was this came at 80%. I played with it for hours, uh, probably like three hours yesterday before the battery died. I plugged it in when it got enough battery power, you know, I plugged it in. I waited like 30 minutes, 40 minutes and it worked. And, I, and so I was playing some games on there. I was trying to get my library set up to do this video, which obviously still aren't set up because I didn't put any of this stuff in here. And then I was all ready to go. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start this, I'm gonna shoot in an hour, so I'm gonna plug this in, charge it up a little bit. Came back a half hour later, it was on the home screen, on the startup screen, and I was unable to get it out of the startup screen. So I'm not sure why it decided to reboot or whatever, but it glitched out. I'm guessing it's probably just the crappy memory card that's in here, or the operating system does have a glitch in it, but it was stuck on that screen. So for the last day, because this firmware is not available and you can't use the firmware out of the RGB30 for some reason, I have been unable to get this to boot. So I had to go through all the assets in the boot sequence one by one from the assets off the RGB30 before I finally replaced one that got this to boot up. And it was just one at a time in and out of the computer switch it back to the old one bring in a new one now it's working so i was actually thinking i was just gonna torch this thing in a video and say how much it sucked but i feel like lately i've been like on a bad run of getting handhelds that don't work so this one works now i do actually really enjoy this handheld it's interesting because i hold it differently than my rgb30 but if i hold it like i hold my rgb30 it's comfortable but for somehow i find myself holding it like this and i don't know what it is and why i do it but it's very uncomfortable after about 10 20 minutes you start to get a notch in your finger from the sharp edge on the back here and it really just starts to dig in. So that's unfortunate. But if I hold it like this, it's fine. I don't know what it is about this that makes me want to hold it any differently. Feel this plastic on here reminds me of the cover of one of those Fisher Price cars, the red and yellow ones. This reminds me of the cover with that hollow feel to it too, because it is obviously hollow inside. It is a thicker like ABS plastic type thing like that cover is. That's just what that feel is. So if you were kind of trying to put a reference, that's the closest I can come up with now. I'm not exactly sure if that's exactly what I feel like it is, but it's pretty close. As far as gaming goes, this is going to play up to some basic Dreamcast things like that. There are some quirky things with this. Like typically, you are going to run PPS PSPP for your PSP emulation. The search function, as far as I can tell, is not working. But you can just go like, you know, just sit and scroll for hours if you want. And nothing is in order because it's all numbered. But that's really fun. I wonder if I can put a favorites on the top. Well, let's go back to the top and see if my favorites actually is saved. That would be pretty cool. Nope. A lot of things in here are just not working, and it's not ArcOS's fault. It's just because they bootlegged a copy of ArcOS to create this. Hopefully, the cool team that did the R36S, R35, R33, hopefully they'll jump on this and come out with a build for this pretty quick. That would be phenomenal. So I played Super Mario World 2 on here, Yoshi's Island, and it worked. So now I don't know where it went. How would you ever find anything in here? And there's no icons. I mean, come on. Give half a name and no icons. This is just stupid. Well, that's just not working. I wonder if it'll use my card out of my RGB30. Let's find out. Think it can handle a Samsung card? Got it. Cool. Well, guess we'll put the other one back in. Well, it's a rebooting. I guess this would be a good time to talk about. I always thought that the RGB 30, and I talked about this in some of my videos, felt like a cheap handheld. Like, it just doesn't feel super premium for what you get. I mean, it is a great handheld. It just it doesn't feel premium. This feels more sturdy and yet so much cheaper for some reason. It just, it has that cheap plastic feel to it. We got our card back. So we'll just go through and do a couple of games here for you real quick. And then I'll kind of recap some things here for you. So some higher end systems, because this is a 3566. So we know that it's going to play some games. I did uh, start off a game of Mario 64. I've actually never completed the first level of this game. So I was kind of thinking I was going to play that game on here because I always pick a game for every handheld. And then it went to crap on me. And now I don't know if I want to risk it. In most systems, you're going to go select X or R3 for your menus. This one actually doesn't give you that option. If you select start start, it will bring you back to the home screen. We do have Mario 64 and it does run at full speed, no problems. I turn on a FPS counter for you, but I can't actually get into the menu for this specific emulator. And if I can, I just don't know the combination, but I've tried about everything I've tried before and I was unable to get in there. It does have a little pacing glitching you'll see every once in a while. Uh, and some of the art and stuff on this game from what I noticed. Or just some background image type stuff like right here on the floor. I'm trying to think if I've ever played this where it didn't have that. But again, I've never made it past the first level on it, which I think is right up here if I remember right. I really do need to play through this game. This is supposed to be like the Mario game of this generation at least because it was like this huge 3D thing. I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here. Again, to get out of a game, it's just going to be select, start, start. So DS seems to work just fine. I don't know what the combination for drastic is on here. Oh man. Well, it worked. Moving along. Back to 
Oh yeah, forgot about this. I'm glad I did this. So if you want to play PlayStation or some other systems, I believe Dreamcast is like this too. I can't get the screen to rotate. I've, I've tried. I'm not good with math in that aspect though. I don't remember what the ratios are supposed to be, but you do need to play your games like this. So hopefully that's okay with you. You just got to play in Tante mode, but they work and there's, uh, we're going to skip that. We will play some PSP though. And that is not having that problem, but they had set this up on a four frame skip on God of War. And it was running at 15 frames per second at like a four frame skip. The CPU does struggle sometimes with God of War, but I mean, this thing was nowhere near set. I think part of the problem is if you review these things enough, you get used to playing these at the wrong frame rate. And then when you actually go to play it on something that works, you just get confused. All right, so we're rocking at 20 frames per second right now at a frame skip of three. It struggles a bit. It's doable, but it doesn't like it. There's an update in here to run ports. I'm wondering if when I updated that, that that was the problem I had where it decided I didn't want to boot anymore. I may not recommend that. I'm not sure. You can try it at your own risk but I did have to do the port update and I was getting some ports ready to put on here to try them out. And that was the last thing I did before I plugged it in. I don't know if that update didn't take or what happened there. But word to the wise. Um, we did have Dreamcast. I say, where did that go? I actually haven't tried Dreamcast yet, so this would be, uh, be a new experience for me. Oh, yeah, that's why I didn't try it. <laughs> Never mind. I did try opening it. Again, in Tante mode. I like to take a look at these things as, like, if I was a normal consumer and how these would be when they came out of the box and somebody were to present this to me and be like, here you go. Go play some games. Like, how good that user experience is. I think that they tried. They failed hard. I mean, just from the beginning. Before you even turn the device on, you can tell you can't use your R2 or L2 buttons. They're just stuck in the system. You literally physically have to open it up. And then over time, while you play games, because of the way those cushions are, if you don't replace them, they get stuck again. So you actually do need to replace them if you actually want it to fix the problem. I don't know what AI they had working on making this handheld. This D-pad is absolutely atrocious. This might be in the top three worst D-pads I've ever reviewed. And I've reviewed some pretty bad D-pads on some like $5, 101 handhelds before. This is worse than any of those that I've ever reviewed. So just a word. If you want to get this to play D-pad centric games or games that require a D-pad, I would just steer clear of this. Also, because the RGB 30 has been coming down a lot in price with different promotions, you can almost get these at the same price today with the current promotion as I'm making this video, just to let you know. But there are a lot of cool things about it. I mean, I think they did a lot of things right. It has a good feel feel. I just don't like the feel of the plastic, but the actual feel in hands is good as long as you hold it correctly. And the fact that they were able to get like even the HDMI to work and stuff. I mean, I know it's already built on the SOC for this, but, and they did some really nice things inside of this once you open it up. I don't know why they didn't spend that money putting stuff on the outside, but I, this is probably the nicest stamped SOC I've ever seen, which makes me think that they're probably trying to cover something. But yeah, once you get everything kind of up and running, it's a fun little handheld. And I think I still might play Mario 64 on here. I, again, I've just never played past the first level. It's just not a game I played when I was younger. I will throw a link down to my thing, my bop, if you do want to pick this up. I also wrote an article about this before it even came out. Kind of what I kind of thought we might see when this device came out. So you can go check it if you want to and see how right or wrong I was. This is personally not on my recommend list unless you like to tinker because I'm already having fun with it tinkering. I actually almost added a bunch of parts to it and then realized like, wait, I still have to do a review. Like I said, I did fix these buttons and all you gotta do is there's a little U-shaped plastic pieces just like you would see on like a XU10 or something like that. You just gotta cut those off. And I fixed that right up. I haven't figured out a good solution for this D-pad yet. I ordered some new membranes. So we'll take a look. I don't know that a membrane is going to fix this. And I've got a box full of D-pads from other devices. So I'm gonna see if I can't find one that fits in here, but it's a weird, really square shape. So I'm not sure what actually will fit in there or not. It's kind of thin. But anyways, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share this video with your friends because you know sharing is caring and we love and care about each other here. Also, if you didn't hit that subscribe button when I just asked you to, there's one folder on the screen just trying to taunt you right now. It's just right there. It says saying, join the family. But anyways, there's uh, two videos up here that Google picked for you. So hopefully you'll like one or both of them and I have no idea what they are. So I, I just like to play the lottery game. But anyways, that's all I got for today. I'm out. Bye-bye.